Good morning. That's better. So let's stand and sing when the roll is called up yet.
Good morning. Thank you for getting your class in here on time this week. We appreciate that. Like I've never been late. I'm going to keep teaching you about it. Hey, welcome. It's a good day to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. The chili cook office tonight. I know you've been hearing some rumors about some cheating. I'm not going to mention any names, Brother Farrell. Paying off some judges. Saw one of the judges getting out of a Lamborghini in the parking lot this morning. We're going to have security here tonight. So it, it, it'll all go good. How many are going to be in the chili cook office? Who else cooking some chili? Well, that was, that's terrible. There we go. Look at it. He's got some secret brew going. Is it going to be good? Is it really hot? Anybody going to miss work tomorrow with this stuff? Maybe so. <laughs> if you call into work tomorrow because you ate too much chili at church, that may not go over too well with your boss, okay? Hey, if you're a guest, it's your first time being here with us today. We are happy and excited you're here. We love that you're here. You're not here by accident, but please do us a favor. On the back of the pew in front of you, you'll see these guest cards. Please, please fill that out for us. It gives us a record of your visit with us. Please drop it off in the place in the back of the uh, sanctuary. I say this every week, but I do mean it. Brother Farrell takes those cards each week and lays them out over his desk in his office, and he prays over those and prays for you and your family. He'll do it for any of us in here if you want to fill out a card. Please do that if you have any requests whatsoever. Uh, you know how to do your tithes and offerings, of course, and also if you want to do it online, you can do it at ffbcjonesville.com. And you can give your tithes and offerings there. Here in a little bit when Brother Farrell comes forward to preach, if you have children that are fourth grade and younger, we are having that today, right, Becky? Fourth grade and younger, they can quietly be dismissed and leave out the back of the uh, sanctuary, hook a right, and head down there, and they can worship as we worship in here. With that being said, when you bow your heads, let's go to the Lord in prayer, please. Dear Heavenly Father, oh, I love you so much. We all love you. We love this church. I love these people. Lord, if there's anybody in here that, that you know has a... Uh, you know, a burden on their heart. Please, please give them some peace during this difficult, difficult time in their life. Lord, we ask that you just clear our minds and our hearts and let us just be a vessel to absorb your word today as Brother Farrell brings it to us. Lord, as always, we pray these things in Jesus' beautiful and wonderful name. Amen. 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 Let's stand and sing. You, you are God.
Lay down. 
Take your Bibles and turn to John chapter 6. John chapter 6. And once again, if I might take just a moment of personal privilege uh, to seek your prayers. Some of you were here on Wednesday night, became aware of uh, what transpired this past week. While I was at the uh, evangelism conference, I got a call late at night uh, for my daughter, and it became very apparent that she was broken. She was <coughs> fearful. She was afraid. Jennifer, my youngest, does not have any children, so her dogs become her children. And... Uh, just before Christmas, one of her great Danes suddenly uh, passed away and broke her heart. Remember, that followed on the heels of her mama going to heaven. That was a very difficult time for her, being the good dad that I am. Uh, I bought her a great Dane puppy uh, from somewhere down in Texas. I should have known nothing good comes from Texas, <laughs> but uh, nonetheless, she fell in love with a little puppy, and uh, that evening, she said, Dad, the older Great Dane that she had, had, for whatever reason, struck at the little puppy, and it crushed his little head, and so she was at the Arkansas Veterinary Hospital, and they had told her that because they didn't have a CT scan, there was nothing they could do, and they sent her on to Memphis, uh, to the veterinary hospital there. Uh, so this was sometime around 9.30, maybe a little bit later, about 45 minutes after that call. Uh, I and the guys were with me, but just about ready to lay down and go to sleep, and the phone rang again, and it was my daughter, and she was, in this time, a parent shock. On the way, she had wrecked her automobile, and she went off an embankment uh, about 15 foot, slid through the ditch, up the side into a fence. Um, her only concern was the dog. I said, right first, how are you? And she said, Dad, I think I'm okay. But she's not concerned about the puppy. I, Got her to pause long enough. I said, but how about your husband? Yeah. Well, I think he's okay. <laughs> so, and I, and I will say, that I don't know any, any troopers we have in here, but there was a state trooper that showed up on the scene who absolutely did not do his job, but went beyond his job. And he loved on my daughter, though he did not know her. And he became aware that she needed to get to Memphis. And so he sent out an alert uh, over his radio. I couldn't get to her, I was on the way. I called my oldest son, he was on the way. But in the meantime, she calls us back and says, don't worry about it, Dad, we've got it covered. Someone answered the alert, a dispatcher from Far City, Arkansas. And he said, if you can get her to Far City, I will get her to Memphis. And so she got there, and again, I tell this story because I, I just want to give praise to our law enforcement. The gentleman was there to meet them right there at the uh, exit. 
he was an older gentleman. He loaded them into the car and he said, as you see, I'm an old man. I have no family, but I got two old dogs at the house and he would kill me to lose either one of them. And I paraphrase, buckle up, I'll get you to Memphis. <laughs> so they, uh, they traveled to Memphis and they put the little dog into uh, the hospital there. Uh, again, just to kind of shorten the story so that you can pray. Uh, everything seemed to be going the right direction. They went yesterday with the intent to bring the little dog home. But when they arrived, they said, we knew you were coming, so we didn't call you. Uh, the little pup is just probably not gonna make it. And so they had to put the, the little dog down last night. And on the way home, they called, and this time her husband called, and this, that's an unusual phone call. But he called and he said, uh, Farrell, he said, please talk to your daughter. He said, I am very worried. She's about to slip over the edge. Uh, he said, I think she's about to have a breakdown. And then he paused, a young man who's got a little wisdom. And he said, Farrell, I don't think it has anything to do with the dogs. I think it has everything to do with her losing her mom. And it had just been one thing on top of the other. And so I spoke with her for quite a while last night. and. Uh, and she just finally said, Dad, it's, it's not the dogs. It's just I miss Mom. And I don't understand. You know, I've been a pastor for 50 years. Sometimes you don't have the right words. And I had to tell her last night, babe, I don't know the words to share with you. All I can tell you is that God is good no matter what you may think. And God is able. Look to Him. I sent him a song this morning you may be aware of. It's by Danny Golke. It's called Stay Strong. And a part of that song goes like this. I'm going to sing with the words. Though my hope is shaken, my faith will stay strong. And sometimes as believer, our hope gets shaken. That just simply means we're not sure we're going to get what we want. But faith says, God will take care of it. That he's always at work. He hasn't lost sight of the situation. He knows your heart. And I said all this to say because I know you will. Pray for my daughter. Pray for her family, which includes me. These are difficult times. Uh, <coughs> let's look at the scripture. John chapter 6. Verse 22. <coughs> when I ask that you stand in honor of the reading of the word of the Lord. The day following, when the people which stood on the other side of the sea saw that there was none other boat there, save that one whereinto his disciples were entered, and that Jesus went not with his disciples into the boat, but that his disciples were gone away alone. Howbeit there came other boats from Tiberias nigh unto the place where they did eat bread, and after that the Lord had given thanks. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, neither his disciples, they also took shipping and came to Capernaum, seeking for Jesus. And when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, when camest thou hither? Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, You seek me not because you saw the miracles, but because you did eat of the loaves and were filled. Labor not for the meat which perishes, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you. For him hath God the Father sealed. Then said they unto him, What shall we do, that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that you believe on him whom he has sent. 
Let's bow and pray. With your heads bowed, would you just simply say to God, Lord, I'm here to meet you today. Would you say, Lord, my ears are open. Speak. Would you say, Lord, my heart is open as well to do your will. Would you commit your life to him today as a believer? Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we take a moment to pause in your presence. We want you to know that you are welcome in this place. That we came here today to meet with you. And we're not going to be satisfied until we've met with the Holy God. And Lord, we want you to change our life from the inside out. We came through the doors one way. And our prayer is that, Lord, we would walk out the doors a different way. Not the same. But crafted, changed more into the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I pray today that you will be glorified, the Lord Jesus exalted in our midst. Holy Spirit, have your way among us as you represent God the Father and God the Son. Forgive me, Lord. Cleanse me. Empty me of self. Fill me with your Spirit. Teach, preach, flow through me the word of God. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You may be seated. Earlier, the Lord had miraculously filled the bellies of the hungry multitude that had gathered. He did so with just a, a few fish and a few loaves of bread. In fact, the scripture says that he fed as many as 5,000 men. That is besides women and children. Now, hear me. As it always is, their bellies are empty. And they sought the Lord. They wanted to make him a king, we learned. A sovereign who would meet their needs. But Jesus, knowing their hearts, had slipped away in the night. The hungry multitude sought to find him, not to crown him as Lord over their lives, but that he might minister to their physical desires. The problem, Jesus had said earlier, eat this bread, physical bread, and you will hunger again. Drink this physical water and you will thirst again. But eat and drink of the bread and water that the Lord gives. And you will never hunger or thirst again. This morning, I want to challenge you to find your significance. To find your fulfillment. To find your life. Not in the things of the world, which the crowd sought, but in a personal, intimate, ongoing relationship with the Messiah, the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. We begin the story this morning with the search for the Lord. And again, the scripture says, the day following, that is after the feeding of the 5,000, when the people which stood on the other side of the sea saw that there was none other boat there except the one whereunto the disciples were entered. They knew Jesus didn't enter that boat. 
that they had gone away alone. Howbeit there came other boats from Tiberias near to the place where they did eat bread after that the Lord had given thanks. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, neither his disciples, they also took shipping and came to Capernaum seeking the Lord. Now listen to this statement because this will be the very premise uh, of the message. Everyone is searching for something somewhere to fill the voids of their lives. Everyone is searching for something somewhere to fill the voids of their life. However, the truth for most, and perhaps for some of you here this morning, when they find what they think they're looking for, while it may temporarily quench their thirst, it eventually yields to a greater need. It's like the two men whose boat capsized on the sea. They managed to launch a raft in which they spent several days. The sun scorched their bodies. Hunger overwhelmed them, but worst was the thirst. After a few days, desperation set in and the men began drinking <coughs> the seawater. At first, it appeared to quench their thirst. But eventually, it led to an even greater thirst. And in the end, poisoned their system. What they thought would sustain them led to their ultimate demise. And back to the story itself. Panicked by his absence, the crowd began to search for Jesus. They were a mixed multitude that sought the Lord for different reasons. There were those who sought the Lord to quench their thirst with an unending wine and fill their bellies with miraculous meal of fish and bread. There were those who sought the Lord to touch their bodies and heal their afflictions. Lepers wanting cleansing, the blind wanting to see, the deaf wanting to hear, the dumb wanting to speak, and the crippled wanting to walk again. There were those who sought the Lord to deliver their souls from the bondage of Satan, that he might take authority over the demons that plagued their lives and set them free. There were even those who sought the Lord for something more than the promises of an empty religion. Whatever their reason, they saw in Jesus someone who could and perhaps someone who would meet their needs. Listen. Maybe their desires were not spiritually pure, but their faith in Jesus to meet their needs was. And while I commend their faith in the sufficiency of Christ, I caution that what they saw was not what they really needed. What about you? What are you searching for? To fill the vacancies and the voids in your life. The crowds that day were guilty of trying to fill their life with the abundance of stuff, things, rather than a personal relationship with God. And for this, Jesus rebuked them and challenged them to look to Him as the secret <coughs> to living. Verse 27. Labor not for the meat that perishes, not, not the bread you just ate. Not, not the fish you just consumed. But for that meat which endures unto everlasting life. Which the Son of Man shall give to you. For him hath God the Father sealed. And if I can paraphrase. Don't look to find significance and satisfaction. From the temporal things of life. Here today, gone tomorrow. But from that which has eternal value. 
Let me suggest to you some of the ways man has sought to find fulfillment in life. Of course, not all, but some. See, some believe that happiness, fulfillment, significance is found in one's success. Listen to the confessions of a man who sought through his personal success. His name, oh, by the way, is Solomon. In Solomon chapter 2, verses 1 through 11, Solomon speaking, I said in my heart, go to now, I will prove thee with mirth. Therefore, enjoy pleasure. And behold, this also is vanity. I said of laughter, it is mad and of mirth. What does it profit? I sought in my heart to give myself into wine, yet acquainting my heart with wisdom and to lay hold on folly till I might see what was that good for the sons of men, which they should do under heaven all the days of their life. Now listen to this. I made me great works. I built me houses. I planted me vineyards. I made me gardens and orchards. I planted trees in them of all kinds of fruit. I made me pools of water to water therewith the wood that bringeth forth trees. I got me servants and maidens and had servants born in my houses. Also I had great possessions, or possessions of great and small cattle above all that were in Jerusalem before me. I gathered me also silver and gold and the peculiar treasures of kings and of the provinces. I get me men singers and women singers and the delights of the sons of men as musical instruments and that of all sorts. So I was great and increased more than all that were before me in Jerusalem. Also my wisdom remained with me and whatsoever mine eyes desired, I kept not from them. I withheld not my heart from any joy for my heart rejoiced in all my labor and this was my portion of all my labor. Here it goes. Then I looked on all the works that my hands had wrought, and on the labor that I had labored to do. And behold, all was vanity and vexation of spirit, and there was no profit under the sun. Solomon discovered the hard way. Life is not the product of one's success. One can be successful, now listen to me, and still be empty on the inside. Are you? Others seek happiness through earthly relationships. I submit to you the story of the woman at the well. In John chapter 4, Jesus met a woman whose life was in disarray, shambles. She was for lack of a better description, a mess. And one of the issues that we find as Jesus meets and converses with this woman is that she had sought her significance through relationships. You remember Jesus said to her, go and find your husband and bring him to me. And, 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 and she said, I, I, I don't have a husband. And she, he said, yeah, for the first time today, you've actually told me something that's true. In reality, you've had five. And the one that you have now is not your real husband. But here's what we can find among any, many other things in that story. It was a woman who sought happiness, this fulfillment in her life, significance, was through relationships. But to know, avail. I found this story on... Uh, page called heartsupport.com my heart is aching beyond anything I meet someone who I fell in love with and who I thought could take the place of the empty space inside my heart I have struggled with depression for many years of my life and at points almost feel like this world would be better off without me in it taking my life was always something I figured which would have happened when I was still using IV drugs but now I'm sober and I, I look and I want to die more than ever. The love of my life is leaving me. I fear that the future may hold a dark space for me and I may not recover from this one. Samson believed he could find life through a relationship with Delilah. But instead of life, he found death. A third way, 
Others seek happiness, fulfillment, significance through the accumulation of stuff, possessions. Just think of this story. There was a young man whom the Bible says was very rich, came to Jesus. He said, Master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus gave him instruction. But the young man disregarded the instructions of the Lord. In fact, the Bible says that he went away sorrowfully because he had great riches. He believed that he could find significance. He believed that he could find life. He believed he could find happiness through stuff, the accumulation of wealth, possessions. But again, all he found was brokenness and a life that was barren. And fourthly, there are those who seek happiness. Are you ready? Through religion. They seek to fill up their lives with religious affiliations and activities, believing religion will fill the emptiness of the voids. Wrong. Just ask the Apostle Paul in Philippians 3, verses 4 through 8, Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man think that he hath wherewith he might trust in the flesh, I more circumcised on the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law, a Pharisee concerning zeal, persecuting the church. What things were gained to be, here we go. Those I counted lost for Christ, yea, doubtless I count all things, but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dumb, that I may win Christ. And again, if you want the Reader's Digest version, he said, I tried religion and it didn't work. Amen. It was as but dumb to me. But then I found Jesus. Amen. Everything I had been looking for, I found in him. The young rich ruler, again, he had religion, but he was empty. The woman at the well, do you remember? She had religion, but her life was in shambles. It's not religion. It is a relationship that brings life. The people were searching for Jesus to meet a temporal need. Jesus wanted to meet an eternal need. Which brings me to the final point. The source of life. Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that you believe on him who has sent me. They still didn't get it, did they? They asked, What work can we do to gain from God this life you're talking about? See, the secret of life runs contrary to the philosophy of the world. The philosophy of the world demands that we earn it, that we gain it that we do something for it. Salvation, my friend, is not in your activities, your accumulation, your accomplishments. It's in the atonement. Amen. Salvation is not the result of belonging to the church, and so many people think so, but the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Salvation is not procured by you. It was purchased for you. Amen. You are bought with a price, the precious blood. The Lamb of God. Salvation is not the result of personal righteousness, but the result of a personal relationship entered not by one's goodness, but by grace. Amen. Salvation is not the result of faithfulness to God, but faith and acceptance in the free gift of God. Amen. Salvation is not in the doing, it's in the done. Salvation is not in the church, it's in the cross. Salvation is not in your service, it's in the Savior. Salvation is not in the energies of the flesh, but in the experience of faith. When you stand before God, He will not examine your works to determine your entrance into heaven. But whether or not you have been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Three things. That we should have learned. The secret for satisfaction. A personal ongoing relationship with Jesus Christ. The secret for serenity. Peace. You want peace though by the way. 
a personal, ongoing relationship with Jesus Christ. The secret for salvation, a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to pause for just a moment at that point and ask you, do you have one? Particularly as it relates to salvation. I got a text the other day from a member of this church. And she said, Brother Brown, I wanted you to know this story. A real good friend of mine was tired of the way she was living. Her life was empty, it was void. She felt she had no significance. But somewhere along the line, she came to understand that maybe the answer was not in stuff, not in relationships, that is, earthly relationships. And she thought to herself, I think I'm going to go to church and see if I can find the answer. She went to church this past Sunday. And she met the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Two days later, her and her daughter, Truman, Arkansas, were on the way home. And they died in an automobile accident. I returned the text and saying, well, that's a sad story with a glad ending. I hated that she had died. But I am so glad that two days before her departure, God was gracious and she was redeemed by the blood of the Lamb and she left earth and she went to heaven. Amen. So what about you? And remember, you don't have to do in order to be saved. He's done it all. But here's the natural progression. Jesus paid it all. Now all to him. What? I owe. You see, my friend, while you don't have to do anything to be, to be saved, you get to do some stuff. You get to be baptized. Amen? You get to be a part of a church. Amen? You get to serve. Amen? You get to pray. Amen? You get to give. Amen? You get to read the Word of God. Amen? You get to witness. You don't do it in order to be saved, but you do it because you are saved. What a privilege to serve our Savior. The Lord's heart for the people is to meet their needs. He fed them. He filled their bellies. But still... Something was missing. You see, what satisfies the soul is a personal, intimate, ongoing relationship with the Lord. Built on faith in Him. Followed by faithfulness to Him. So back to the original question. Who or what are you searching for? Who or what are you searching for? Who or what are you searching for to fulfill your life? I stand before you this morning in testimony. The answer is Jesus. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name. Lord, we can commend this crowd. They searched for Jesus. But your word has a tendency to pull back the covers and reveal the motive. They didn't want a relationship with Jesus. They just wanted him to do stuff for them. And sometimes, Lord, I believe in it, even as believers, that's kind of the way we are. We really don't want an ongoing, personal, intimate, with Jesus. 
We just want him to do stuff for us when we have needs. Lord, I pray today that we recognize that all of the things we've talked about this morning that the world seeks after doesn't bring fulfillment, doesn't satisfy the soul, doesn't provide significance, it doesn't bring with it peace and joy. That only comes as we are intimately intertwined with the Lamb of God, the Lord of glory, Jesus Christ. And as believers today, Lord, I pray that we would come to that place in our lives where we can say, nothing more, nothing more. I just want Jesus. And whatever Jesus then brings to our life, that's his business. And he'll do that which is good for us because he loves us. But for us, for the child of God, let it be today just Jesus. And whatever that looks like. And Lord, I pray for those in this congregation this morning who are somewhat like the woman I shared about. Her life is miserable. She was unhappy. Her heart was empty. She felt like nothing. No one. She seemed to have no purpose in life. Like the weak waves driven by the wind on the sea. But I'm thankful, Lord, that evidently somewhere, someone gave a witness to her. And she went to seek the Lord. God, I guess if I'm going to be theologically correct, you found her. That Sunday morning, she gave her life to you. And then it was all right for her to go home. And today, just like the thief on the cross, thou shalt be with me in paradise. So, Lord, I pray for those that have never opened their heart to you, never been saved, never been born again. In this invitation, they won't waste any time. They won't bypass the opportunity. This morning, they'll walk down the aisle and say, yes, I want Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Make the reservations for the kingdom of heaven. For we know not what the tomorrow may bring. All we have is right now today. Lord, have your way in your invitation this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to ask that you stand. Our counselors are here at the front. The altars are open and available to you. You're invited to come. Yeah.